Dale, I Rapstein of Linen Associates with your Spider ETF wrap up for this Thursday, the 4th of February, 2021 at 6 p.m. Central Time. Well, my heart goes out for the people that were in game. This was a $483 stock just a few days ago. It's down to 53.50. AMC was $20. You're down to 709. So what do you do with this? Well, these markets started out at about 20 here and about two to three there. Maybe that's where they're going back to. I don't know, but uh, you turn the government on and they look at it. You get these people that are smart enough to realize we don't need them coming after us. You don't take them on and you get a market that gave you something dramatic. What's really happened here is you took the market in a far left move, way to the upside, something none of us have ever seen. It reminds me of when crude oil went, what, $20, $40 negative a barrel? Negative. You were basically being paid if you had storage to take it. And then within no time at all, it's a $50 commodity. You talk dramatic moves, you're getting them right now. Why they happen, there's always a reason. But tomorrow's gonna be the job data, and we wanna see that. The number that the market's looking for, about 50,000 jobs added. We had a bad December. If you get 100,000, that could spark another move to the upside. And some of these stock indices really caught on fire today. I've had people ask me, don't I think that uh, for infrastructure in the US, it's priced in? I don't. Had a, a question on that. Why would I think that when the Biden campaign is just getting going? Are you noticing? They're saying, I made a promise of $1,400. I'm not backing off on it. They might give some ground as to who gets that. I don't think it should be helicopter money for all purposes, but it's interesting. So we'll see. You know, if the market breaks under this, it certainly looks very bearish. This could be a head and shoulder formation. We had an island that is no longer an island. I'll take that off in a, a little bit here, maybe for next week. As the market's making this move, we've got no trend. We broke the downtrend when you got under to over, rather, 21.48. You have a lower and low, higher high. Where could the market be reaching to? Why not the 18-day average? I call that the line in the sand. Why? It's often where a market goes, be it if you rallied, up and you fall back, it's where it tries to figure out what to do, or it locks in against it often to see where's the next move going to come from. It's the safety zone. And it wouldn't surprise me if the market wants to try to get back up to that number. What held this break was the lower Bollinger Band. The theory of Bollinger Bands, these lines right here, are that 95% of the time the market will trade within the algorithm. I believe that a number of the smart traders. They can be computerized, guys like me that have been around, uh, people that understand this theory and know how to work with it. They believe that you don't fight these bands. I know that. If you lock into them, there's one way that we handle that. And if you back away, there's another way. But generally speaking, generally, first time you hit a band, top or bottom, money's coming out of the market. To play for this move makes sense when you're this tight. To play when you're this wide and you're coming down doesn't make sense. So it's the width of the move because how much energy have you used? You'll hear me say as the market narrows in, think of it as a pipe with the spring, that it's winding up in there and as it's winding up, it's gonna burst. That makes the sense, but you gotta have the narrow, uh, the narrow area there that it bursts out of. This is not gonna be a burst area. That's my point. As I take a look at momentum, it has turned up. So that gives me more hope, that's all, that the market will get to that 18-day average and play it. Do I see a trade out of it? Certainly not. You've got the higher high, lower and low. You ended a downtrend and you're in a correction phase. Now you want to get high? Well, this is THCX, the cannabis ETF. Wow. This is a market that did pretty much what we're talking about. Here you are riding, and I, I want to make a point out of this. You're riding this market higher. You get over the Bollinger Bands, you're trying to come back under them, you're getting an extended rally. Watch out here. If that turns down, what do you want to do? The next day, be careful here. Look at that reading. My work says, my work, that when that happens, a 72 reading, number one, the odds of re-embedding the next day are this small. 
until you get back over that high, I think the pros are gonna be now, not only out of the market did they get, I think they're going short. And I think they're gonna to look to get back to that line in the sand, that 18 day average of closes. Here's the market, it's certainly given plenty of opportunity, I think you'd agree with me, and boom. Now you've hit it, that's all that it's owed. It doesn't owe this anything more. That's what this momentum was worth. Now, whatever's gonna happen, happens on a whole new set, and you tell me where the market's gone. But it gives you that opportunity. It's like hitting the Bollinger Band. Now, let's talk about that Bollinger Band one more time. Do you disagree how narrow this was? Again, that's the pipe. I hate to say pipe when I'm talking THCX, but that's what it is, and the market burst out of it. That's the point that I'm making. Did we have some classic breakouts? Another time we'll talk about that. In SMH, on this break, you've gone back and you're fighting your battle right now at the 18-day average. This trend is up right now. Why? You have higher lows, higher highs, and you've closed over the 18-day average. You, the stop would be, I think, under the recent break low, the objective, if the market can rally, is gonna be 246.77, and you're in your battle zone of that 18-day average. Momentum, well, momentum's not oversold anymore. It's trying to perk up with the marketplace. In the industrial sector, same thing. You got down to the Bollinger Band from coming from the top to it. And I realize traders are going to say, oh, it's going lower. The easy money is the first time you hit that Bollinger Band. That's what my point is. You've got a fairly wide range. You came there. Now you're back into an uptrend. Yes, an uptrend until you take out now 86.79. The potential could be the upper Bollinger Band. Trend up. Not so in energy. You're not in a downtrend anymore. I think I've made that clear over the past day. You ended this whole leg when you hit that lower Bollinger Band. You had your opportunity against it, and then the market comes up. So you've broken the downtrend. You don't have lower highs, lower lows. You got a higher high, lower low. Momentum is starting to turn up from an oversold condition, not a lost embedded reading. And now the market is trying to figure out what next. It is not trending. It is just at that number that I gave you, uh, that 18-day that average. Look where QQQ fought the battle. You tell me. That's why that 18-day average is so important. Do you always get a trade out of it? No. I didn't get one out of this in terms of my chart analysis. I got one to not that the short side from the upper Bollinger Band to the 18, that was the objective, period. If the market wanted to keep going down, that'd be great, but when the market took this high out at 326.42, you ended any pattern on the chart. Now you're overbought. Maybe you get to the upper Bollinger Band. You're certainly at contract highs. New highs on the move, you know, I'm not bearish, you can count on that. In the emerging markets, this is one of the trades like the dollar index that so many uh, of the traders that came out in December, I don't do that. I have learned that making those predictions in December, I've, I guess I'm too old now. I, I realize that for the one time you get it right and you get called on the CNBC, you're gonna be wrong so many times, is it worth that? And I get on CNBC and the other stations from time to time anyways. So I'm happy about that, I don't do it. They, they have been all bullish this market, as you know. This was the, the most popular trade. Are they behind anything? No, they're not. The longer term traders probably coming in in this general zone. So let's not beat them up. It just hasn't gone anywhere yet. Bigger play, weekly chart is what I'd be looking at more than the daily chart on that. GLD, need I tell you, bearish crossover. So let's go back here. 18-day average gets under the 200-day. I pointed this out, I think it was yesterday, I said, watch out, lower Bollinger Band's probably in target here. Bingo, you went through it like it didn't even exist. Uh, but that's from that bearish crossover. And now you've got to be careful if that 100 comes to join all this. Be, you know, that, that's another level that you'd have to be paying attention to. I was impressed with the gold miners today. They paid very good attention to the lower band. It's like, bang, I hit that number that I was talking about. 
uh, I don't know if I want to press it anymore. And that makes a lot of sense to me. Is the market trending? It is not. It's got a higher high and lower low. So you still look at Bollinger Bands and the 18-day average to see what you have. The trend has been down in TLT, but now I've got to give you a fair warning. Do you want to go through the jobs report? A lot of traders won't. Now, if you, you're going to be a little bit late because if you didn't get out, how do you get out now? You know, I guess maybe somewhere in the aftermarket you can trade it. But I think this pros took money off today. I think they're going into that report. Very careful here. I know that most people are looking for bullishness out of the report, not necessarily out of this. By that, I mean they're looking for an increase in uh, jobs. So we'll see what the market does. But you're already oversold at a Bollinger Band bottom. FXE. I think the pro money is going, okay, maybe you get down even more, but you've really extended the break. Could it go lower? It certainly could. So how do they follow it? Well, we've talked about that and we should review it. First time you hit the number, what a lot of traders will do is they'll take the number off the whole part of their position and they're hoping the market doesn't get a big bounce the other way. The next day, they're looking for the range, the high of the past two days. They're looking at that. The high of the past two days. That's what I think they're going to look at for tomorrow. Got it? And that'll take them out of the market. They're going to give something up. Are there other techniques? Of course there's other techniques. But that's what I think that a lot of the traders do look at to see what, where they're at and where they're going to go with these trades and try to figure them all out. So I want to remind you, I put out at... Uh, I start recording at 8.40 in the morning, Central Time, Chicago, uh, my report covering about 40 charts on spiders and ETFs. They have more studies than these have on them. They're going to have moving averages, additional ones that are very important. That they're, It's really important to entry moving average. Then the window envelopes, which are standard deviations from the 18-day average for exit points. It's not only a Bollinger Band. Bollinger Bands are nice, but they don't always get hit. Window envelopes more times than not do. So you want to get that part put together. Then the morning news and all. So it's out I try to get it posted before 9.30 every day. Sometimes I'll run into a glitch, just a lot of things going on in the marketplace and I want to cover them. But typically before then, how do you go in and, and view it all in that? Just go to our website, www.irapstein.com, under the word research on the top. It explains everything. I'm Ira. You have a great day. I will talk to you all tomorrow.